Hello, I'm Dana Johnson with the USDA Wildlife Services, and I'm just going to show you some armadillo sign. You can see down here how, how bad this is all rooted up. This is all signs of armadillos. It's all over the place here. And the reason armadillos like this substrate is because it's very loose. And loose substrate creates ideal areas for insects, which is the armadillo's main diet. So they, this time of year, it's real big. You'll a lot of yards in the fall, flower beds full of armadillo sign. So this type of substrate is, looks great. Armadillos think it's, they think it's lovely. So they've they pretty much got into this whole area in here. So what we're going to try to do is catch one. Armadillos are difficult to catch because they're not like a raccoon or a possum where you can just throw some sardines or some fish hole in the back of a cage and bring them in. They, their eyesight's poor and they just kind of go where they want to. They really have no direct route wherever their nose takes them while they're grubbing around. So what we've got set up here is an, the basic armadillo trap. And 90% of catching armadillo is pure luck. But this is how you would do it. What we have is two boards, both sides held up by stakes. You only need about three stakes because if an armadillo pushes here, the board pushes against the trap. If they push from the other side, you have this stake that keeps the board. So when the armadillo is grubbing around, his nose is to the ground, he hits the edge of something, it's dark, and because of their poor eyesight, they just keep walking. Now as a bait, if you wanted to use bait, I just like a sweet bait, anise oil, something, you could probably use some Kool-Aid, just something really sweet smelling. Just put a little bit on because the more scent you have floating through the air, the more chance of catching a coon or a possum. This is only to keep them in the area. They get on this, they're gonna keep walking, smell a little bit, and they'll walk straight into the trap here, hopefully. Sometimes they'll get on the outside. Now this trap right here has only one entrance. The way you could make this a better set is make your, these runners go as far as you want. The farther they are, the better chance you have to catch one. Another thing you can do is put a trap in the back, and we'll show you that a little bit later. But this is, this is your basic set. Now over here, Next to the wall, we have another set, utilizing the side of a building. Most houses, most of your armadillo signs are gonna be right along the flower bed, which is right along the base of the house. So all we've done here is utilize this to help us. And we have a trap right next to the base of the building. And we have another one of these boards to kind of angle them in. Now you can take this board and put it out farther to increase your chances, or you can just put another board to the end make a longer board. Now if the armadillo comes on the other side, you're going to miss them. But that's the luck of an armadillo. I mean, that, like I said, they, don't, they might smell it and just keep hitting the board trying to get around. Otherwise, they, they, they get the scent. They might go around the board. Who knows? Like I said, it's, it's all luck with armadillos. But when they're just grubbing down these edges, hopefully they'll just walk straight into the cage. And these cages we're using are your basic cage traps. There's about 25 different makers of these things, you get what you want. The best one for an armadillo though is one with a dual opening. As you can see, this one's got one opening at one end. Just closes when they walk across the pan. They do make traps with two openings, one on this side, one on this side. That's good because you can do this same thing with one trap and make two angles. All right, this is the final armadillo set. You see we got two traps back to back. This is a prime example where it'd be nice to have one trap with two openings. That way you don't have to use these two traps. But you can see we did the same thing on this side. And that just increases your chance to catch that armadillo. Instead of just having one area where that thing come behind, you got two sides. And the better thing to have, honestly I would, you know these, these small boards are good for this program, but if you really have one that's really irritating you, the farther you go, the better chance you have. So I would, I'd probably go 16, 20 foot out. That way, you increases your, these are what, six foot boards? You need to go at least 16 feet out, get a 16 foot, two of them. And you can, act, you can make this V a little wider. You could probably come off at an angle, what's that, 45? You'd probably come off at a, about a 30 degree angle and really open this thing up. And that way, it increases the chance of that armadillo getting inside. And if you got long boards, 
it really makes a big area for them to come in. Most times in a normal house setting, your armadillos are going to be around the flower bed, so you don't have that big of an area, so you can make a big trap for a small area they're using and increase your chances a lot. But the smaller you make it, the more likelihood you're going to be getting up every morning for about two weeks waiting instead of about a week. But don't expect to do this and it work the first night. It's probably not going to. This is all pure luck. We got a little, few marshmallows, have a little bit of scent in here. But the rest of it, you just better hope he wants to come to your place that day. Otherwise, they're going to do what they normally do when you're going to set this trap up and they're going to leave for two weeks. And when you take it down, then they're going to come back. So I hope this helps you out. This is about the only thing you can do. The other thing is a firearm, but this is the best and most humane way of doing it. Now, the one thing I do want to, re want to iterate is you do catch one of these animals. I do not recommend relocating. It's because you don't want to put an animal into another location. It could have a disease. You put it into a new home range. You know, this, it's mainly for coons and possums, but the way I look at it, if you want to trap the animal, be willing to euthanize the animal. Some vets will euthanize it for you using uh, euthanasia or a chemical method. You can use a firearm to the back of the head, but I think you need to be prepared to euthanize the animal. If you're not prepared to euthanize the animal, you need to look at what's attracting the animal and get rid of it. They need food, water, and shelter. If they're coming to your house for food, get rid of the food, you'll get rid of them. If they're coming to your house for shelter, get rid of the shelter, you'll get rid of the animal. Figure out the reasons they're coming, and a lot of times you can solve your problem without having to euthanize. So it's your choice, but always remember, if you're going to trap an animal, be prepared to euthanize it in a humane method.